I recreated this two second piece of an Apple ad in Fusion. And I'm gonna show you how to do that right now. This is what the spline editor looks like, all the animations and the node graph. So you may see a media in node right here, but all this is for is for me to be able to see what the original was versus what mine was. That way I can try and copy it to the best of my ability. This is only a three node setup, which is kind of crazy. Like I thought it was gonna be a whole lot more, but it only took three nodes. And really all the animation is in this text node right here. So we didn't even need these nodes. We just needed a text and a media out. But I liked having the background here so I could see what I'm doing on a white background. Now, if we go in and we look at this text node, I'll show you all the different things that I did to animate it. So if we look at the inspector over here in the top right, what we can see is all the different things that I've animated and how I made this all work. And so what I did at first was I wrote the what's in one because that's what was in the original ad. If we pull up the original ad here, we can see that the full text is what's in one. And so I wanted to use the same text so that I could try and match this as much as possible. I knew it was a write on animation, so we have to write on all the different text here. And so what I did was I just went over to the inspector here and I did a write on animation based on what I saw, the time it took to write on the different parts of the text. And so what you'll see is on frame one, the W comes in, on frame two, the H, three, the A, four, it comes in with three letters, which was interesting. It probably just due to timing. And then five, six, six brings in the I and it changes. And so you just have to type on based on the time that was in the ad which was only about two seconds and so each i went through frame by frame and i looked at okay this was when this goes in and this was when these come in and so i keyframed it to make sure that they came in at the same time as when the ad did so i could get the timing right um which took a lot of a little bit of work but when you look at it it comes in all nicely and timed well so you can read everything as it comes in. The next challenge was figuring out how to do this little pop-in where you can see that the A grows a little bit. So if we look at this really closely here, you can see that as things come in, they are a little bit bigger and then they shrink down to their normal size and then it gets bigger and, and it jumps in and it keeps growing and growing and then it, it kind of has this pop in feel and then it fades off so the that those sections were like the hardest to figure out and i did a bunch of different things to try and figure out how to make that work there's only really one aspect of fusion that i needed to use to achieve all of that and i didn't need anything else and that was the simplicity of selecting this text here right clicking in the text box here and choosing to do a character level styling. So then I had this modifier that was a character level styling that allowed me to select individual characters here and modify them one by one, however I wanted to. So that's how you'll see things like the size gets modified and opacity gets modified and stuff like that. So as we come in here, each one of these characters has a different animation that you can see here in the spline graph with this like different displacement. So if we like get rid of all this other stuff, cause none of that other stuff really matters. And we just look at what this graph is here. This is all just the character level styling and the different changes at different points. And so what you can see is that the one just pops in and it's different sizing animations that I did using the character level styling modifier. And the same thing over here when if you look really closely it's word by word that it like fades away and the only way you can do that is through the character level styling and so all you have to do for that is choose what you want select a character go to the start of the text the text point and the character level styling and then add a new keyframe and then change whatever you want move the playhead a little bit more, change it again, and you'll have new keyframes that 
work in your favor and can be adjusted however you want. Using these three nodes and looking at this frame by frame, I was able to recreate it and create this recreation of it that pretty much mimics how it how the actual ad works there's some changes and stuff because i can't copy what apple's doing but i can do my best to make the animation look exactly the same and so that's how you do that is you just you grab a text node put a write on animation here so you do a little bit at a time and then this pop in right here just changing the the size here creating an animation where as the eye pops in the text moves up and then it needs a little bit of a overshoot so it sits in and then it keeps on growing and so when you're looking at this that's what you need for that and then everything else is in the character level styling you just need to choose the characters and make sure you get the right kind of feel and tracking and sizing the only other thing that was a little bit of an issue for me that i figured out how to do was instead of tracking here for character level styling on like the one the one here when you, it's like popping in it's not tracking that makes the n come close to the o here it's actually the if you go to the shading tab and you go down to the offset that makes this n work so close to the o so you set the offset a little bit differently so negative a little bit and then normal and then it creates this pop in thing so what you don't want to do is tracking because tracking can change where the positioning of the text is because tracking if you did tracking here it changes the positioning of the text see but using offset doesn't change the positioning of the text but changes the positioning of the character itself so you want to offset that character to be in the position that is just ever so slightly close to the next one and then the next couple frames it just pops into its original position and it looks like when it's going full speed that it's just popping in so you want to do everything you can to avoid the actual position of the text moving unless you want it to and the way you do that is by offsetting each of the characters and now the other thing that i noticed was in the actual ad is that as this is going and popping in on one it's moving to the left so if you go to layout, you want to animate the center here. Just move it to the side as it goes. And so what you get is this really cool animation where it just like pops in, grows a little bit, and like fades off. And so all of that is done in the, the center animation, the character level styling, a little bit of the font and style, and then the size and writing on the text. It's super com like it was super complex to figure out it taught me a lot about how the different ways the animation interplays with each other and the way that apple is using it to create these amazingly simple but complex ads this is only two seconds of a full ad like full 30 second ad so there's so much more to learn here but that's how i created a two second animation from an apple ad